O hidden life, vibrant in every atom. O hidden light, vibrant in every atom. O hidden light, shining in every creature. O hidden light, shining in every creature. O hidden love, embracing all in oneness. O hidden love, embracing in all. May each who feels himself as one with thee. May each who feels himself as one with thee. No, he is also one with every other. No, we also one with every other. आप सभी लोगों का पुनः एक बार स्वागत है और जैसा कि मैंने बतलाया हमारा आज का विषय है सेल्फ इन ऑल एंड ऑल इन सेल्फ जिसको लेंगे डॉक्टर दर्शन कुमार झा डॉक्टर झा प्रयागराज से आनंद लॉज के मेंबर हैं इन्होंने बनारस हिंदू विश्वविद्यालय से ज्योग्राफी में पीएचडी की डिग्री हासिल की है और वर्तमान में वो बतौर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इलाहाबाद के जगत तारण गर्ल्स कॉलेज में एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर कार्य कर रहे हैं इन्हें कई इंटरनेशनल अवार्ड्स मिले हैं इन्होंने पंद्रह से अधिक पेपर्स ऑथर किए हैं जो कि नेशनल और इंटरनेशनल जर्नल्स में प्रकाशित हुए हैं और ये अपने कॉलेज में इसरो और आईआईआरएस यानी इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग का जो आउटरीच प्रोग्राम है उसे कोऑर्डिनेट करते हैं एकेडमिक चीजों के साथ साथ इन्होंने बहुत सी एनजीओ के साथ भी कार्य किया है वाराणसी और प्रयागराज में विशेषकर बच्चों महिलाओं और स्लम डवेलर्स के अपलिफ्टमेंट के लिए और ये एक सर्टिफाइड माउंटेनियर भी हैं। गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन ने इनको एज एन इनोवेशन एम्बेसडर रिकोगनाइज किया है और इनका शौक है कविताएं और लघु कहानियां लिखना तो ऐसी प्रतिभा संपन्न डॉक्टर दर्शन कुमार झा का हम स्वागत करते हैं और उनसे अनुरोध करते हैं कि वो अपना सेशन शुरुआत करें डॉक्टर झा नमस्ते मैम नमस्ते तो टुडे टॉपिक इज सेल्फ इज इन ऑल एंड ऑल आर इन सेल्फ नमस्कार टू ऑल सो आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट माय सेशन विद द वर्ड्स ऑफ डॉक्टर एनी बेसिन that to know god we have to know man or to man no man we have to know god to study the universe is to learn both god and man for the universe is the expression of divine thought only and the, this universe is so mirrored in the man so the first question is what is this self is it atma or i or ego yet uh, with the sense of self is a common empirical experience yet philosophers psychologists mystics and theosophists who have explored it have not come to a common conclusion on what it really is some affirm its existence but define it in different way while other such as david hume philosopher david hume or buddhist deny its existence altogether as a separate entity like a hume says nothing but a bundle of collection of different perception which succeed each other with an inconceivable rapidity is the self the earliest the earliest explorations of the nature of self are found in the upanishads for example as atma or purusha that underlies human experience this these hindu scriptures generally identify the self or atma with the universal self or we call this uh, paramatma even christianity also distinguish between three kinds of selves the body soma soul psyche and the spirit pneuma and the psychologists they have also two types of you there are an empirical or phenomenal self like psychologist william james says and it is consisting of material social and spiritual self but that underneath these facts facets of self is the pure ego which is the source of unity and continuity of the experience of self on the other hand freud functionally distinguished the conscious ego from the id 
that is your natural instinctive tribes and the super ego that is the social consciousness so uh, after the seeing the views of psychologists and uh, you know, we can go to the philosophers or i would like to quote the philosophy of advait vedant where atma is a real self or essence of the individual it is a chaitanya or that means pure consciousness self revealed self evident and self aware and in some way permanent eternal absolute or unchanged now we come to the main topic what is the theosophical view about the self the theosophical view about the self is basically identical with the hindu and somewhat maha buddhist view in the seven principle of man dr besant says that the true self is the atma that expresses itself through six vehicles or principle that is buddhi a spiritual soul a roop manas higher mind roop manas lower mind feelings kama etheric double link sharira and the physical body a stool sharira this true self or atma is different from the reincarnating ego the causal body and the personality or personal self that is the four lower principle so at the four layers lower principle we think that the roop mansa feeling kama etheric double and physical body is a not the part or not the connected with the self but the higher tree is the connected with the self and uh, there is the explanation that the uh, buddhi or the roop mansa and aroop mansa both are the part of that buddhi uh, both are the connected with that buddhi is the vacuum who pull the atma into the lower self dr any besant also says in her lecture self and it seeds that knowing and understanding self makes all problems soluble that which realized clears all difficulties away that which known brings us to supreme peace that beyond which there is nothing and in knowing which we know everything that is or can be that means if you know self we can know everything now in theosophical theosophical view there is a lower self is visible in higher self as we purify our lower qualities like physical ether astral and mental we can identify lower self as personality and higher self as individuality our every actions emotions and thoughts make impressions in higher triangle that is individuality as we become pure and refined it get absorbed in our higher self and to merge lower self into higher self we can may learn supreme secret and knowing the supreme secret may do our duty in the battle of outer world so here is a question that knowing self is not only important for the spiritual upliftment this is also important to deal the daily life like uh, you can remember that the supreme truth had been told by shri krishna to warrior arjuna not for the spiritual purpose but to solve real problems not a gyani arjuna but the warrior arjuna so the knowing the self is not only important for us for up, uh, upliftment or spiritual upliftment but also to deal with our daily life problems let us go to the beginning of universe and try to realize what is meant by self for the self of universe and what is the self of man these are one or in knowing the self we know what is the root root of the universe and what is the root of man alive traveling backward to the beginning there is the infinite darkness when we try to watch that darkness where nothing and everything both exist when our rishis go backward and backwards when they had reached brahm who is without origin who is one and all and describe it as supreme brahm or par brahm or the universal self and their all voices in silent all thoughts fell still so when we try to 
uh, see in that darkness, watch the darkness where nothing and everything both exist. There might be a glimmer through the darkness, a light which is formless. We know not whence it comes nor how. Light that is only light without limitations and there our thoughts may rest and a real thought is possible. And this light is also a nomenclature only. And Mundo Kupanishad said, luminous without form, without origin, without light, without mind. Now, there is a question. What is the meaning of without light, without mind? He, out of whom everything of the universe originate, has and is nothing. Yes, because mind implies more than one. And that is one. Because mind implies separation. And here there is a no separation. Because mind implies someone that is thinking and something that is thought of. And there is a as yet, but the one in whom is enfolded all that me without, but has not yet come into manifestation. Madame Blautsky, in dealing with this, which is beyond all consciousness, which is beyond mind, with this beyond thought, say that it is not because it is less, but it is because it is much more, because it is deeper, wider, all embracing. In the secret doctrine, so Madame Blotsky quotes from the divine parameter, God is not a mind, but the cause that mind is, not a spirit, but the cause that the spirit is, not light, but the cause that light is. Later, Dr. Besant interprets this. The mind of man thinks, but in order to think, it must remember the past. It must realize the present. It must look forward to the future. But in Brahm, there is no past, nor present, and no future. There is one eternal now, and no distinguishment of time, of place, or succession of states. He is one out of which everything is to be built. In. And that is self of the universe. We can call this the Brahm, Ishwara, or the Lord. And in the key to the theosophy, it is written that self or Atma is no individual property of any man, but is the divine essence, which has no body, no form, which is imponderable, invisible, and indivisible. Uh, Madame Blotsky says the Atma is the universal all and becomes the higher self of man only in conjunction with Buddhi, its vacuum. Now we can move towards the main question that how can we understand that self is visible in everything and vice versa or self is in all or all are in self. In the secret doctrine, this is, uh, it is explained the universe is an expression of the divine thought. The Chandok Prasad also said, Eko hum bahusyama. There is the beginning of the universe. There the commencement of differentiation. And it is an internal differentiation, not an external expansion. It is not a change of nature, but a change of condition. It is not alteration of substance, but variety within the one due to I will multiply. When uh, we can understand this so with the example of Bhagavad Gita, when Sri Krishna appeared in his divine form or Visarupa, and stretching from earth to a sky, blazing a thousand sun, Arjuna with his divine eye, given by Sri Krishna, see all gods and all the gradations of living things in their body. Therefore, it is written that for the sake of self, everything is dear, not for the outer self, but for the inner self, the lowest as well as the highest, the speak of dirt as well as the loftiest deva. We cannot separate one single thing from the supreme. It is the self of all and exist in all and is all.
there is a famous story of uttalika in the upanishad uttalika and his son swet ketu uh, uttalika mm, take a, a glass of water and mix some salt in this and then he asked swet ketu now you separate this uh, salt from the water swet ketu said no i can't then uttalika said test this water so it get to taste water from the top of the glass then uttalka also said taste it from the middle of the glass so it get to also taste it from the middle of the glass then uttalka said taste it from the bottom of the glass he also taste from the bottom of the glass and then sun said it is salty either it is tested by on the top or middle or the bottom then the father told his son that as the salt which could not be seen yet prevail all so it was the brahma or the universal self he told to his son o swet ketu do art that this is our bris so the atma is called the bris and the atma is or the brahma is everywhere but we can, cannot separate with this uh, with the brahma from jivatma or something sometimes we say that atma is the self of man and parmatma is the self of all if we say of man purusha then we say purushottama for the universal self but this is also illusion the self is one the same everywhere in the great and in the small this is identical there is a no difference there is a no separation there is a one eternal undying and ancient self and that self is the self in you and in me and in the universe there may be difference in condition in manifestation but the essence and nature is one and the same and therefore is it written in chandogya upanishad that atma is a bris it is very significant to mention here the philosophy of advait veda which is also based on upanishad and our Hindu scripture. I would like to quote Sukta of Niralambo Upanishad, which is often quoted by the philosophers of Advaita Vedanta. Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya Jivo Brahma Hai Vinapada. It means Brahma is real, and the universe is Mitya. Mitya means it cannot be categorized either real or unreal. The second line says the Jiva, self of man, is Brahma. itself and not different the philosophy explains that brahma due to its maya appears as this world and everything is in also brahma and atma is satchit anand and not different from brahma it means brahma is the fundamental reality underlying all objects and experience brahma is explained as pure existence pure consciousness and pure bliss and consciousness is not a property of brahma but its very nature our scripture says yatha pinde tatha brahmande yatha brahmande tatha pinde as is the universe individual so is the universe and as is the universe so is the individual there are many examples given to illustrate this relationship i would like to quote the world and brahma two only two that uh, first the space of pot and the space of cosmos is not a two different thing it is just arbitrary uh, division of the space a space is uh, in the whole cosmos undifferentiated in reality thou arbitrarily separated by contingency of pot just as the world is in relation to brahma and the second example is uh, like a uh when we see the picture when we see the shadow of sun in a pond in a sea or in a well the all shadow is identical there is a no difference between the shadow of well and the shadow of pond or the shadow of sea so the brahm brahm either it is self is in man or is in animal 
or is in universe is the same or identical. To understand this, how can we realize this? Uh, this philosophy uh, says that there, occur, there are three planes of existence. First, the plane of absolute existence, the parmartic self. The second, the plane of worldly existence, vyabharikasa. And the third, the plane of illusionary existence, pratibhasik sat. We can understand this with an example. Like uh, when we are roaming in the evening and see a rope on the uh, road, but think that it is a snake. Now we are alert and we act like uh, we act uh, fearing like this is a snake when we come to know the reality of that rope that this is only rope we can act normal so this is the pratibhasik sat that illusionary plane where we see uh, illusions and when we know the real knowledge we can see that this is illusion the second stage is vyavharik sat in the world where we live that this is our father this is our wife this is our mother this is our workplace something 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 we think this is uh, someone is different from me something is different from me and when we know the real knowledge that the all real knowledge of paramartic that all are same all are the just manifestation of the uh, universal self or brahman we can think that this jagat is also a illusionary so the Sankar call it's a Maya. Jagat is a Mithya. That means it is not real, but it's exist. So when we uh, know the real knowledge, we can uplift to uh, ourselves at Paramartik. Uh, I would like to quote uh, a poem of Jay Sankar Prashad, which uh, Dr. Susma ma'am always uh, quote in the college. That Niche Jaltha Upar Himtha, Ek Tadaltha Ek Sagan, Ek Tatuki Hi Pradhan Tati, Koho Use Jariyati. That that is the self. Hence, we can reach the conclusion which our Upanishad said that Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahm or I am the self. And since this I is nothing but pure consciousness, the Sakchi, the Atma, it reflects another Mahavakya, Pragyanam Brahm. That means consciousness is Brahm. So we can understand with the simple words, the ocean is not in the waves, yet the waves are the ocean. They are within each other, inseparable. When Lord Krishna assumes the Visarupa, the vision showed the interconnectedness of everything with everything is. Nothing is outside ourselves. The universal consciousness cannot bear the idea of duality. We must go beyond a space-time consciousness due to which persons and objects look external. So, understanding the physical side of universe we can go the spiritual side of universe. The more we approximate to the nature of the self or the nature of the ultimate reality, the more free we are. The jivatma or individual self is a mere reflection of that singular atma or supreme self or the Brahm in a multitude of apparent individual body. It is a, not an individual subject of consciousness, but the same in each person and identical to the universal eternal brahm so we can conclude that the universe is expression of the divine thought and as any vision said the universe is mirrored in man so self is in all and all are in self therefore we pray as brihadanyak upanishad says astoma sadgame tamsoma jyotirgame mrityurma amritam gama Thank you and Namaskar. Uh, Dr. Jha, thank you very much for this very enlightening talk about, uh, about the self being in all and all being in self. 
And this is a very philosophical topic. It's a very deep topic for each one of us to contemplate what it means to us. So I thank you once again. And now our session is open to the participants. If they would like to discuss something or they would like to share their thoughts, they may please unmute themselves and talk. I'm sure Dr. Sushma Shivasta would have something to say to you. Sushma ji. Namaskar, Vibhaji. Congratulations. Namaste. Namaste. Actually, Sushma is uh, suffering from dengue. Okay. Okay, not an issue. Thank you, Sushma ji, for your best wishes. And anybody would like to add on this? Uh, I think uh, uh, I had Sudeep Kumar Mishra ji. Sudeep ji, aap kuch kehna chahenge? He explained so beautifully, so I don't think we should say something. <clears throat> right, right. Thank you. Thank you all. So this was a very short and sweet session and I really appreciate uh, Dr. Jha taking the time to speak to us on this most deep and philosophical point of the self. It is the level where we all are connected, where we all are one. Though, as he said, that on this plane, jo pratibhasit hota hai, on that we feel separateness. But in reality, at the level of self, we are all one. So if there are uh, no other points to be discussed, then we come to the close of our session. And we conclude the session with the closing prayer. <coughs> Om. Asitoma Sadgamaya Tamsoma Jotirgamaya Rityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Sarvesham Svastira Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantira Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makash chit to kabhak pavit. Om shanti shanti shanti. Thank you all for joining. Namaste. Thank you, Namaste. Dr. Cha. Namaste. Namaste.